On this channel, I specialize in making really complex looking images easy to create. So just follow along with my step-by-step -step tutorial of this painting and you will amaze yourself. Okay, so you can probably apply the techniques and process that I'm gonna show you in this tutorial to whatever app or whatever tablet that you happen to use. Having said that, I am using the app Procreate on the iPad. In terms of that, I've opened an A4 canvas, which is dimensions 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 DPI. In terms of the colors, I've pre-selected some colors in this area. Each of these colors has what we call a hexadecimal code attached to it. And if you look down in the video description, you'll find each of those codes listed and you can type them into this area. So within value and the colors, you can type them in one at a time, press enter. The color appears up here and then you can piece it together yourself. Just tap it into this area. Alternatively, to save you some time, I've added a link also down in the description next to the codes that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download the color file for free there. In terms of the brushes, I'm going to be using the soft brush with an airbrushing medium brush just below it also within airbrushing and then probably just within artistic the leather wood brush all of these brushes are just the default settings i haven't changed them at all if you like this kind of tutorial please give the video a thumbs up hit the subscribe and don't forget the bell notification to make sure you do get notified of all my future videos with all that said and done let's get started so on layer one i'm just going to go to my colors pick the first color at the top in our color palette and I'm just going to drag into the canvas area from the color circle and it flood fills the entire canvas. Staying on the same layer I'm just going to go to this second color on the top, go to my brushes, airbrushing soft brush, put the brush at about 15% and 100% opacity and I'm going to draw a line about two-thirds of the way up just do it over it a couple of times for good measure, go to the adjustments Gaussian blur and I'm going to blur it in to about 50%. Then I'm going to create a new layer, layer 2, go back to my colours, pick the third colour now. So again, within the soft brush, I'll just reduce it slightly to about 12%, stay at 100% opacity and just a little bit above the halfway point. We'll do a stripe of this, then we'll go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, Blur it in again to about the 40%. And for this bottom section, I'm just going to fill it in with the soft brush. And then just press lightly to sort of blend it in to that point. So it just disappears into the fade that we've just created. Then I'm going to create a new layer. Go to my colors again. I'm going to choose this light yellow color. I've got a slightly dark yellow, but this is the light one to begin with. Still on the soft brush with an airbrushing. We're just gonna put it down to about 3% size, but really quite low on the opacity at around 20%. And initially, I'm just gonna do a couple of stripes that cut across, not all the way, and then maybe one slightly underneath it. It's not really an exact thing. Then I'm gonna put it down to about 2%, the lower part of 2%, down even further on the opacity to about 10%. And I'm just gonna start bringing in some dashes and stretched out lines as well in this area. So do a few. We're pressing quite lightly. So in addition to the fact that we've only got it at 10% opacity, I'm actually pressing quite lightly too. Now bear in mind, if you're quite naturally heavy handed, you might want to turn that opacity down a little bit further to a lower percentage, but whatever works for you. So I'm just doing a few stripes that run across we don't really want exaggerated clouds in the background, we just want a hint, and that really will probably do for this sky. Sometimes, as you'll see on my other tutorials, I really add a lot of cloud texture and spend a long time on those clouds, but this is, in terms of the clouds, a bit simpler. Just a few stripes that cut across, really. And then just a few more kind of broken dashes and shapes here as well. Don't agonize over this too long, just get some shapes in there like that. And we can always soften it in a little bit as well. So I'll go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and I will just blur it in to about 5%. Then I'm going to create a new layer and 
I'm going to change the blend mode. So if you go on the little N symbol on that layer, the N stands for normal. We can just scroll down and I want to put it to add. And when we tap out of that, you can see now instead of the N, we have an A. And I go back to my colors and I'm going to use these colors now. I'm going to start with the sun. So I'm going to start with the white. I'm going to choose my brush. I'm going to put it on a medium brush this time with an airbrushing. Have it at around 5% size and I put it 100% opacity as well. And I'm going to put the sun just slightly off center and about a third of the way down ish, maybe a little less than a third, but you decide somewhere around here anyway. Then I'm going to change color to this yellow color. It's quite an intense yellow, but because we've changed the blend mode, it has a different kind of quality to it. So I'm going to switch to the soft brush with an airbrushing. I'm going to put it to about 10% size and stay at about the 10% opacity. And I'm just going to go for the center of that sun. One, two, three, four, five. I just keep tapping it a few times. In fact, it's quite a number more than that. I've lost count now, but quite a few. And you get this kind of halo effect anyway. Then I'm going to put it up to about 20% size. Stay at the 10% strength. And again, tap a few times in the center of that sun area. And you start to get this effect. And then I'm going to increase it yet again to about 40%. And a number of taps here as well. And so you're getting a really nice kind of glowing effect like that. Now we can still see each of those individual rings. So we can soften those in a little bit. We can go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and just blur it in to about the 20%. And obviously the sun now at this point has gone a little bit fuzzy and hazy, but that's not a problem. We can go back over it now. Simply go to the white, change to the medium airbrush again, have it at the 5% size and 100% opacity, and just again, go for the very center, a few taps there, and we can just reclaim the intensity of that sun again. I'm going to create a new layer and again change the N symbol to the add. Go back to my colors. I'm going to continue using this yellow. I want to do it on a separate layer just so it doesn't get too entangled and too complicated because I'm going to add some slight more cloud textures again. So I want to change to the soft brush again. Put it really quite low in terms of size to the 2% and stay at the 10% strength opacity. And now we cannot go over the white, so it doesn't matter how many times, even though we've got an intense yellow, orange, we cannot destroy that white. But what we can add are some intense yellow glows around that sun. So that's what we're going to do. So if we just remove those, zoom back out again a little bit, make sure actually the lower part of 2% is probably about right. And I'm just going to lightly start building in some textures around this area, just some dashes. I don't want to go overboard. It's going to be actually quite obscured by the tree, but there's going to be some bits that just extend beyond the tree where you're going to start getting just one or two bits of this texture showing through. So I'm doing this in a series of short dashes and stripes. And it's good practice this, even if you do end up covering most of it up with another feature, it just means that you're getting more practice and you know, you can always save your layers and duplicate your layers and use them in, in as part of another painting at a later point too. So one of the benefits of digital is that each, each component, each layer is something that you can copy and paste into another piece. So you get a lot more value out of every single component and detail that you might create, which is brilliant. I'm going to put that up to the higher part of 2%, but reduce it down to about 5% strength. And I'm just going to do bit more on this upper area too and then just in that top section just one or two slight more bits as well something like this okay subtle texture but it it adds to the effect I'm gonna do quite a lot of layers on this so I'm gonna create a new layer again change it from the normal to the add I'm gonna stay on the soft brush but I'm gonna change the color from the yellow to this orange and I'm gonna put the size of the brush quite high at about 15% but keep the strength really low at 5%. And I'm just going to start building in some intense glow in this area now, just a few passes like that, maybe one or two just a little higher as well, but I don't want to overdo it. I'm just building it up, which is why we've got it on the 5%, so it's really quite subtle. 
where it builds in. But we just want to exaggerate and emphasize some of that glow in the sky. It's a really nice, soft, hazy kind of sun rise like that. Okay, we're going to create a new layer. I'm going to go to my brushes and use the medium brush with an airbrushing. I'm going to use the first color on the bottom row. And I'm going to put the size to about 3% and 100% opacity. And about halfway, I'm just going to do my distant kind of feature, maybe slightly rose on one side. It doesn't have to be any more than that. And then I'm just going to drag the color to flood fill the area below that. Now you can see I haven't removed the Apple Pencil, because sometimes you get a little bit of a gap between the line and the fill. So you can see it's more exaggerated if I go to the left. If I go to the right slightly more, it goes too much. So you dial it back and you'll find the right place where it just minimizes that little gap. And it's not a really so much of an issue because we're going to go to the layer where the N is and just turn the opacity down really quite low anyway. I'm gonna put it initially to about the 10%. I'm going to create another layer and do something very similar. So I'm not gonna change any of the properties of anything. I'm just gonna to continue to do maybe slightly more bumps more kind of features and again I'm going to rise it over this side and then drag flood fill and it remembers the settings that you were using last time so you don't really need to change that again go to the N and I'm just going to turn it down slightly less I'm going to put it about 15% and I'm going to create a new layer do the same again so I'm going to create some bumps and then Again, I'm going to have it joining up at that area and then again, drag flood fill too much. That's probably because we didn't close that area there. Let's try that again. There you go, that's better. Go to the N, turn the opacity down. Not quite as far, so I'm gonna put about 25%. That will do for the initial set of different layers. And stay on the medium brush, but I'm gonna put it down to about the 2%. Stay on the 100% opacity because it's not gonna be any stronger than the layer we've just created. But from this area, around where the sun is, perhaps just off to the side slightly, I'm going to do some tree trunks. And create a little bit of a wobble, perhaps. I'm gonna go over this with a darker color on a separate layer, so don't worry too much. It's just trying to get the position in to begin with. Something like this. And then we can reduce the size of that brush down to 1% and maybe have some branches that obviously splinter off from the main trunks. I'm going to add foliage on top of this. So you don't need to spend too long on the branches because you won't really see most of them anyway. Then I'm gonna change my brush to the artistic leatherwood brush. I'm gonna have that around the 2% size and I'll put it 100% opacity. And in fact, that's not high enough. So I'll put it at the 3% size. And we're just gonna start creating some clumps of texture. And you can probably hear, I'm just doing it in a tapping motion. I mean, you could just do it in a circular motion, but it, it fills in all the gaps and we want to preserve some bits that show the light that comes through. So build up some foliage on our tree like this. And we do want to keep the sun peeking through, so don't go over it too much. Maybe some bits like this, and you still see the sun through. Like that. That'll do for one of the trees. Maybe we can create another smaller one over here. So I go back to the airbrushing medium brush again. Maybe just a small tree here, some tree trunk features and branches. Again, back to the artistic leatherwood. Same settings, you don't need to adjust them or change them. Just a smaller feature here, maybe more of a bush, or it's not quite a fully fledged tree yet. And then back to my airbrushing medium brush, and I'm gonna do the same again, another tree feature. few branches, again, I'm not spending a long time on this, just getting the, the effect of it, because we're gonna go straight to the 
artistic leather wood and just pretty much obscure it anyway. Something like this. Okay, I'm gonna to go to this layer. I'm gonna slide it and duplicate the entire layer. Then I'm gonna to go to my eraser, stay on the soft brush. I'm gonna put its 25% size and 100% opacity. Then I'm just going to erase the whole bottom section up until where the trunks are of our trees. And then I'm just gonna stop erasing it at about that point. Then I'm going to go back to the layer. So the only bit of that layer now that remains is the top section. Go to the N and I can turn the opacity up for that top region to about the 50%. I'm just going to go to that layer again, slide it and duplicate it. And you can see it really has ramped up that effect, hasn't it? I'm going to go to my layers and create a new layer. Change the normal to the add again. Make sure I'm on the airbrushing soft brush. And this time I'm going to change to this orange color on the end. Put it to about 20% size and 5% strength opacity. So really quite low. And then tap a number of times where the sun is. And it builds it up gradually. So it's not going to be too immediate straight away. I'll reduce it back down to about 10%. Tap a few times where the sun is. Keep tapping it until we start to get this really nice glow that kind of obstructs and obscures some of that foliage. It makes it warm and blends it in to the where the sun is. Keep building it up. I could have put it on a stronger opacity to begin with, but I prefer to do this more subtly and gradually. I would say keep doing it until the foliage that we've already created gets a really nice orange kind of red glow, which really works well. And then I'm going to increase the size to 20% again, maybe just slightly higher to about the 10%. And then one, two, three, four, five taps maybe. Up to about 40% size. One, two, couple of taps is probably enough. And you can see we're starting to get a really nice effect being built in. I think I'd quite like to go back to my sky layer where I was using some of these effects. So layer six, we had some of that glow built in. I think I'd quite like to go back onto that layer six, about 30% size. And again, at the 10% opacity, I'll just do another band of it at the top. And maybe also go to the yellow and another band of that at the top as well. I think that's making it work even better. Okay, back to my top layer and create a new layer. Back to my colors. I'm going to use this first color on the bottom row again. Now, I have got lots of colors here. Now, initially when I choose the colors, I have an intention to use the full range, but sometimes it isn't always necessary. And that's just the way it goes. I'm gonna turn the opacity of the layer really quite low to about 20%. And with the Leatherwood brush, set to 100% strength, but only about 3% size, I'm going to start building in some textures here. So you see, I'm controlling the, the strength of the textures through the layer opacity on this occasion, rather than the, the brush. And it just allows you to not worry about how much you're pressing at all. And there's times perhaps where that's really quite useful. And I'm just creating some rougher textures now. We're getting a lot closer. So I'm pushing up with the texture as well, because this brush, especially when you see it bigger, if it goes sideways, then all the little bits of that texture go sideways along with the gesture. But if you go upwards, all the little pieces of that texture also point upwards. And we're dealing with organic things here, heather on the landscape. So if you push them upwards, you're gonna get that appearance like it's heather growing up as well, which I think works a bit better. So I push this in a general upwards direction and it's gonna be a bit more convincing. And you can always just fill in for the bottom section. Doesn't matter about any gaps, texture's not a problem. Create another layer, turn the layer opacity down again. Not quite as low, so about 35%. You can always adjust it. And again, with this upward movement, we're just creating a series of textures here, nice and easy all the way across. We're just creating a variety of different layers here, really. 
like that. And again, just fill it in. I'm gonna go back over this and add more detail, create a new layer. Turn it down to about 50%. Add just some more tufts here, like this. Again, don't spend too long worrying about this. Like that, that will do. New layer, back to our colors. I'm gonna use this color over here to begin with. So it's the fourth color in from the right. I'm gonna change my brush initially to the airbrushing and medium brush. I'm gonna turn it down to about 2% size and much lower at about 40% strength. And I'm just gonna do some tufts and twigs and branches that are just sticking up. Again, keep it kind of random, but we're gonna get a little bit of a twiggy kind of texture at the top edge of our heather. I'm not gonna do all of it, because it's gonna quickly dissolve into slightly more rough textures anyway. But just some twigs that maybe stick up in areas. Some little noticeable sections that are slightly darker. Then we can again switch to the artistic leatherwood brush. And perhaps with a slightly lower opacity than we had, so not at the 100% anymore, we'll put it down to about 50% and we can just start building in some of this really nice, strong color here. We don't want to get rid of some of those little twiggy areas, so just work up to the edge of those, but don't completely destroy them. We'll work all the way across, like this. Go over it a few times, create a new layer go back to our colors and we've got some slightly lighter colors now so I'm going to go for this one fourth in from the right down to 2% size and down to about 40% strength and I'm just going to start adding these in the mix now so going over that top edge just trying to soften in blend in some of that effect an up and down movement generally just all the way across, like this. I'm gonna add some of this color into the other layers that we've created as well in a moment. And you'll see how that works. But initially, all the way across, we can create just a few little bits in this darker area below as well. Not too much though. Then, stay in the same layer, may as well go to this lighter pink and this is going to be noticeably lighter so we're just going to use this not quite as much but certainly on the top edge we're going to see some of that so i'm doing more dashes all the way across and then some more over here as well and i'm going to start going back through some of the layers and applying this pink to those layers too in a moment in fact let's do that now so We'll go back through the layers so not that dark layer because that's what we just worked on but we've got the layer underneath layer 15 and we can just use some of this in the layers that are below so the lower opacity so that it will be a subtler effect which is perfect and then we'll go to layer 14 you can see it there and along the top edge of layer 14 you're using the same color same brush and you don't need to change anything else because layer 14 was set to a lower opacity so it works really quite nicely I'll just do along that top edge a little bit go back to layer 13 which was that layer there and again we can just build in don't need to do it all the way across but just sporadically you can add bits of this color all the way across like so then we can go back up to our top layer, which was layer 17. We're gonna to go to this nice blue color and we can build in again. Don't really need to change the settings too much, but we can build in bits of this blue color. Just tap it, maybe especially into the shadowed area. I think this would work better in that area. It really is quite rough and quite loose close up and that's okay. I'm gonna go back to layer 16 and I'm gonna use the dark color on the very end with 
my airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to put it at around 5% size and 10% strength. I'm just going to just, in fact, let's have it a bit stronger, about 30% strength or thereabouts. And we'll just build in some slightly darker tones just in this very foreground bit. And then we can always go back over it and add some more of the lighter textures on top anyway. But we just need to slightly exaggerate some of the dark. Like so. Back up to layer 17, add all that texture on top. And we can just take a little bit more care now. So these two pink and purple colours. We'll go back in with the artistic brush and the leatherwood brush. And just take a little bit of time just to do it a little more neatly now. So at 2% size and about 40% strength. I'm just going to go in and just carefully pick out some of the shapes that perhaps I want to lean into. And although we've done it very rough initially, there's nothing wrong with going in there and just tidying up a little bit. You know, we can always increase the size of the brush because actually the texture that it naturally creates is really quite nice. So I'll put it up to 3% size. So you alternate between that smaller size to really draw in some accurate shapes that you want and you choose what the level is for you. And then alternate again with your different colors, build in some different layers, keep going over it until, until it works for you, until you're happy with the overall effect. It is quite a rough foreground feature. Now, obviously, I'm trying to get you to a, a generalized effect within the tutorials, but if you really wanna spend the time and agonize over these little details, because it is a foreground feature, then absolutely I encourage that. But these tutorials are trying to get us to a general effect as efficiently and as quickly as possible. And that's always at the forefront of the focus on these tutorials. Now we're gonna switch color to the darker color here on the fourth in from the right again. And I'm just gonna build some of that in. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna go for this darker color on the very end. And I'm gonna build in some of this same texture in with that very dark color as well. I think that can work quite nicely just to disrupt it and break it up a little bit. Like this. And then even some extra features that stick up like we had before. I was using the medium brush before, but there's nothing stop us using this brush to continue that effect. You can get some fine lines out of it. And because it also has that texture, it can work quite nicely like this. And I'm just going in there and I'm just blocking in some really quite large areas with that dark tone. I think that's helping as well. Just scribbling it in, just to really darken it up. And I think on that basis, I'm also gonna go through some of my other layers. So layer 14, I'm gonna go back to with this darkest tone on the leatherwood brush, set to 2% size and maybe just a bit further down. So about 30% say, and I'm just going to Use this to build in even more bits of texture as we go through our layers. We've got a general sense, but a little bit more exaggerating that top edge in places really will work. And that's just on layer 14, just to create some more random bits in the background, more texture, break it up a little bit. It's looking a little bit too uniform. So let's just add some more texture in there. Why not? And then we can go back to layer 13 and we'll do exactly the same thing again for that more distant layer over here. Build in even more texture like that. I'm gonna to go to my color at the top, which is the third in from the left. I'm gonna to switch to the airbrushing soft brush. I'm gonna start building in some of this tone. So I'm gonna go for layer 13. I'm gonna put the brush size at about 5% size and low on the strength at about 10% and just at the bottom edge of layer 13 I'm going to build in some of that tone and it it kind of exaggerates some of the mist effects and I can do the same on layer 14 so just check where layer 14 there it is and I can build in 
hint more of that mist effect running through there as well and just separate some of the layers and just really adds to the effect. I'm going to go to the very top, add a new layer and again with this same colour up to about 10% size on the soft brush and still 10% strength. I'm just going to go over this and soften in, obscure in some of these distant kind of features, really blot it in and that very distant layer, if we go back, which was layer where is it now? Layer seven, I think. It had a slightly sharp edge on that top. So I'm gonna go back to layer seven, and I'm gonna to go to my adjustments, Gaussian blur, and that top edge now, when I slide it, is just gonna soften in, and again, further increase the sense that there's mist. So I've put it up to about 7%. I think perhaps on this mist layer on the top, maybe it's a little bit strong. I'll go back in with the eraser and the soft brush, and just reduce it, especially where we have the trees, I just want to reclaim them a little bit more. And then maybe the top of that mound as well. It's easy to overdo these effects. And I think what also would be useful if I go back to that tree layer, layer nine, and that was one of the duplicate layers anyway, but I'm going to duplicate it yet again. And it further just exaggerates that contrast and that effect. I'm gonna scroll back down to my layer five that we had some texture on. It has the add effect on it, I'm going to go in with this yellow on my soft brush down to the 2% size and down to about 15% strength opacity and just a couple of last touches, just a little bit more texture and things going on in the sky just to focus some of your attention upwards a little bit more in addition. Now that we've got the overall effect, you can just tweak anything that you just want to make slightly more of an interesting feature. And I'll just sharpen this up a little bit too. Break up some of that texture again, if you feel you want to. Just a bit more texture in here. I think it really helps. Maybe just one or two slight focus details on the very top. So I'll go back to my layer 17, back with my vibrant colors and Maybe even stay on the soft brush, in fact, rather than the texture brush. Set to 2% size and about 50, oh no, 40% opacity. And you can just go in there and you can perhaps control some of the little textures if you really want to be extra refined. Just to add a little bit more sharper detail to some of this heather. It is pretty loose, but sometimes just one or two sharper details in the mix can really help tighten up something that is loose, but it stops it looking a mess. And just some further dashes and blobs like this in and amongst that texture. And we're very close to calling it a day on this tutorial. We didn't use all the colors. Sometimes I create a color palette with the plan. I'm gonna use the colors and Sometimes they just aren't necessary and that's fine. Sometimes the, you know, the effects and the layers and the different properties mean that the colors aren't actually necessary. We can achieve them through different means. Last little bit of blue in the mix. I think we're really, there's a nice little extra detail. Anyway, I hope you've learned some extra techniques and enjoyed following along. Please remember to give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and also the bell notification. If you have had a go and you're pleased with your results, then there are links down in the video description that take you to my Instagram and also a Facebook group community that you can join. You can share your versions, get feedback from everyone. Hope to see you there and hope to catch you back here soon. Bye for now.